Hey everybody, we're going to go over atomic structure in this video. Let me pull up the PowerPoint. You can take notes on either page four, which is a blank notes page, or the top half of page five roughly follows along with this video. You'll just have to pay a little bit careful attention on where to put everything. So first off, just to define the atom. The atom is the smallest unit of matter that still retains the properties of that particular element. So I know that we talked about in the last video with um, the history of the atom that, you know, atoms can be divisible, that there are smaller things than atoms, such as those subatomic particles, but those subatomic particles don't retain any of the identity of the atom itself. We talked about in the last video about the protons and the neutrons where they're located in the nucleus. We talked about the electrons being those negatively charged particles that are found outside of the um, nucleus in the electron cloud. So this is just talking about how small atoms are. Um, and if you think about these things that we're all kind of familiar with, it really just drives home how small the atoms are. Um, with the human hair being one million, million carbon atoms wide, if you look at your hair, just one single strand of hair, it's hard to see because it's so light, but going across this way, not how long it is, but just how wide it is this way, that's just a million carbon atoms. So we talked about the proton that was discovered by Rutherford, and this is the positively charged subatomic particles located inside the nucleus. The important thing about the proton is that this is what identifies the atom and the element itself. We cannot ever change the number of protons because if we change the number of protons, we're talking about the element or we're changing the element that we're talking about. So protons never change. The number of protons is gonna be the same as the atomic number. So when you look at this symbol of xenon, for example, the atomic number, which we'll talk about later, it's found over the symbols on the periodic table. That will always tell you how many protons are in that particular element. When we have neutral atoms, and we use the term atoms to talk about neutral substances, the number of protons is going to be equal to the number of electrons because the number of positives has to equal out to the number of negatives. And we say that the mass of the proton is one atomic mass unit. Now, really the the mass of the proton is really really small it's like times 10 to the negative i forget 15 negative 17 somewhere around there it's really small um it's really difficult to talk about it in terms of grams because it's so small so we just say it's one atomic mass unit or one amu the neutron discovered by james chadwick is the other thing that's found inside of the nucleus this one has no charge at all. It's there to help hold the nucleus together to stabilize the nucleus. Um, the number of neutrons can change. We'll talk about that later. It is also the same mass as a proton, one atomic mass unit. The electron is not found in the nucleus. It's found in the electron cloud surrounding the nucleus itself, and its mass is insignificant. It's because its mass is something times 10 to the negative 29. So it is really, really, really small compared to the proton and the neutron. So the mass of the electron does not contribute overall to the mass of the atom that much. Um, again, in a neutral atom, the number of electrons is gonna be equivalent to the number of protons. And the electrons, these are gonna be really, really important in the formation of chemical bonds. This is something, the electron is something that we dedicate a whole unit to. We talk about it a lot during our bonding units as well. So the atomic number, we mentioned before that the atomic number is found on the periodic table. It's the whole number found on the periodic table. And this is gonna tell us how many protons are in that atom. So, um, this, the atomic number is going to tell us specifically which atom we're talking about. So when we look at this picture over here, and I ask you, well, what atom is this? What element is this talking about? You would look at the protons, so the positives, and we see one, two, three positives. So we look to see which element has an atomic number of three on our periodic table, and it would be lithium. The mass number. First off, what I want to point out, the mass number is not on here. The mass number is not on here. This decimal point number underneath the symbol is the atomic 
average atomic mass. Mass number is talking about a single atom. So it's going to be equivalent to the sum of the protons and the neutrons in that atom. Okay, we express it in a mass of AMU, atomic mass unit, um, again, because the grams are so small. So you would just add the number of protons and the number of neutrons together to find the mass number for that particular atom. So let's take a look at some of these questions here. Looking at this element or this atom over here, what's the atomic number? Again, for the atomic number, we count the number of protons. So we have one, two, three, four, five. So that means it's the atomic number is five. Um, what's the mass number? We add the protons and the neutrons together. So we have one, two, three, four, five neutrons. So the mass number would be 10. What atom is this? We look at the number of protons or the atomic number to tell us what atom it is. So this is boron. And let's look, do the same thing on this one. The atomic number, we count the protons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's eight protons. The mass number, we add in the number of neutrons. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven neutrons. So the mass number is six, uh, 15, excuse me. And that um, atom would be oxygen. Now here's an important thing to note. If you look at your periodic table for oxygen, the number underneath the symbol is 16.00. That is not the mass number. See how this mass number is 15? This is talking about this particular atom of oxygen. This is talking about all of the oxygen atoms together, the one that's on the periodic table. Now this one, I said an atom of this element would have how many protons? And it tells me that we have sodium with a mass of 23 AMU. So sodium, we can look at our periodic table, look at the atomic number of sodium, and that's gonna be 11. Then it wants to know how many neutrons. And so if we know the mass, and the mass is equal to the protons plus the neutrons, if we take the mass and we subtract the protons, we'll get our neutrons, which is 12. How many electrons? Well, this is a neutral atom, which is gonna be equivalent to the number of protons, so 11. I would like to point out in the first packet, we gave you a list of element symbols and names and a list of polyatomic ions. It is in your best interest to start trying to memorize these element names and polyatomic ions. As we get in further into the units and building on content, it makes things a lot easier for you and you can move a lot quicker through material if you're familiar with things. And start getting used to their placement on the periodic table. The quicker you can find things on the periodic table, so the more you practice, the easier time you're gonna have um, using that on assessments, okay? So that's it for this video. Let me know if y'all have any questions about the subatomic particles.